And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now the Detroit Lions unfortunately suffered a big loss last Sunday versus the Seattle Seahawks. And a game that was very winnable for the Detroit Lions quickly turned into a very defeating loss. And a big part of that loss had to do with the injuries sustained in Week 2. The Detroit Lions lost several starters and several more key players in Week 2's defeat leaving the Detroit Lions team looking very different going into week three than they did just a few days ago. And that has led to a lot of negativity. That has led to a lot of people saying that the season may be over, that without some of these key players, the Lions will not be successful in 2023. It has led to a lot of negativity around this team. However, Despite the Detroit Lions being a little bit depleted at this point, despite the Detroit Lions having to be in a very difficult situation for likely the next month to six weeks, the Detroit Lions are not down for the count. They are not out of this 2023 season just yet. So today, I wanted to take a look, give an updated look at the injuries, give an updated look at the roster going into the next couple of games, and try to calm everybody down a little bit and show just how talented the Lions still are and how the future outlook of this team is over the next four to six games. So let's get into it. The Detroit Lions practice report this week is brutal. After putting several players on injured reserve over the last couple of days, some more Lions stars have not been practicing. Amon Ross St. Brown missed today's practice with a potential turf toe injury and is considered day to day. The Detroit Lions number one wide receiver did miss some time during week two versus the Seattle Seahawks, but did return by the end of the game and played a majority while having over 100 receiving yards. Taylor Decker is also considered day to day. After quotes from Dan Campbell to the media, it sounds like there is about a 50 50 shot that he plays in week three versus the Atlanta Falcons and a potential that he doesn't play in week four either. Taylor Decker is getting better and is improving, but there is no guaranteed shot that he is going to play next week either. Halapoloi Vitae Vitae is likely out for at least three weeks. However, he was not placed on injured reserve, meaning he could be back before that four-week minimum. If it was a longer-term injury, they likely would have placed him on IR. They clearly believe he, would be, he will be back within two to three games, meaning... He could not have it as major of an injury as we may have originally believed. However, the chances of him not playing very, however, the chances of him playing this coming Sunday or this coming next Thursday against the Green Bay Packers are very slim to none. Emmanuel Mosley is also a player that is continuing to not practice. He is being very limited. He had a hamstring injury on top of the knee and ACL recovery. He has missed the first two games and potentially could miss the third, but just like Taylor Decker, there's also a chance that he is going to play versus the Atlanta Falcons, giving a much needed boost to this Detroit Lions secondary. And then of course, you have Kirby Joseph, a player that suffered a rib injury while trying to tackle DK Metcalf a week ago. He is a player that was limited and I believe did not practice practice today, but is expected to be limited throughout the week and be kind of a game time day to day decision for the Detroit Lions. Those are kind of some of the injury updates we've got as well as the injured reserve update. Over the last couple of days, the Detroit Lions have added Josh Pascal to the injury reserve, James Houston to injured reserves, as well as CJ Gardner Johnson. All three of these players were starters and or rotational pass rushers for the Detroit Lions. Josh Pascal had a phenomenal week one. James Houston was the standout rookie from a season ago that had a couple pressures in just a few pass rush reps. And of course, the prized free agent possession in C.J. Gardner. Johnson have all been placed on injured reserves, are all out for at least the next month. And the Lions are certainly hurting from their departure. However, 
just because the Lions are missing some players, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be a bad football team. We talked all offseason about the depth that Brad Holmes has acquired. We've talked all offseason about how deep this team truly is at given positions. And I think that depth is certainly going to be tested over the next month. Starting off on the offensive side of the ball, this is what the offense currently looks like without Taylor Decker's return. Jared Goff is still your starting quarterback, top five in the NFL in passing yards, I believe four touchdowns to just one interception while completing 80% of his passes last week versus the, versus the Seattle Seahawks with the really only poor throw being that pick six, which is partially a miscommunication error as well as him being hit from his side while releasing the football. Looking at running backs, Jameer Gibbs and Zonovan Knight are both players that I think can play really well for the Detroit Lions in the absence of David Montgomery. Of course, Jameer Gibbs was the 12th overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft. He is a player that is tied for top 10 in receiving yards for a running back this year and could see a little bit more carries and could see some more explosive plays, as well as Zonovan Knight being a practice squad player that started a few games for the Jets last year, rushed for over 300 yards as being a undrafted rookie free agent. And I do believe he will take over more of the bruising back role that David Montgomery left in wake of his injury. I also believe that Craig Reynolds could have a role on this roster being more of a committee of three like they did last season. But I do think Gibbs and Knight are going to be the primary one and two with Jason Cabinda up being likely the fullback. Now, wide receivers, although St. Brown has a little bit of a turf toe situation, I do expect him to play. I do expect him to be on the field starting week three versus the Atlanta Falcons, along with Josh Reynolds, who's the team's leading wide receiver right now, as well as Khalif Raymond, who showed his big playability a week ago as well. They also have Marvin Jones. They have Antoine Green once he comes off the concussion protocol, which will likely be in the next couple of days. Their five wide receivers are not a bad wide receiving group, and so far, Jared Goff has looked really good throwing to those guys. Another guy Jared Goff looks really good throwing to is Sam Laporta, a player that was the second round pick out of the University of Iowa, had over a hundred had, I believe, six catches for 60 yards a week ago and has over 100 yards in just his first two receiving games as a Detroit Lion. He is a big-time playmaker. He has really strong hands, really good routes, as well as being able to make some yards after the catch happen. And, of course, we know the offensive line is very solid. Penny Sewell is likely going to stay at left tackle until Taylor Decker is ready to return. Jonah Jackson, Frank Ragnow, and Glenn Grasgow are going to make up the interior of your offensive line, while Matt Nelson likely takes up the right tackle position. Now again, this will change when Taylor Decker returns as likely he will go to left tackle, pushing Penny Sewell back to the right tackle position, putting Matt Nelson on the bench and a offensive line of Taylor Decker, Jonah Jackson, Frank Ragnow, Graham Glasgow, as well as Taylor, as well as Penny Sewell is not a bad option at all. That is a really strong offensive line. Still, I think that will still give Jared Goff plenty of time to throw. Although this offense is a little bit depleted, missing their starting right guard, their starting left tackle, as well as their starting ground and pound running back. I do think this offense can still put up a lot of points and can still put the Detroit Lions in a situation to compete with anybody in the NFL. The defense is a little bit different. The defense has, of course, struggled very early on this season, and a lot of their big-time players are now going to miss some time. Aiden Hutchinson is, of course, your starting edge. He is going to play 90 to 100% of defensive snaps every single game and will be the game wrecker that we know he is. Currently, through two weeks of the NFL season, Aiden Hutchinson leads the league in pressures despite not having a sack on the year. I believe he has 14 pressures through two games, Problem being, the interior and the other edge rushers can't really do the same. Charles Harris and Romeo Quara have been little to no factor in the pass rush, while Aleem McNeil, Levi Anwuzariki, as well as Broderick Jones, as well as as Benito Jones really haven't been very impactful other than a couple key pass rushing reps against the Kansas City Chiefs. In fact, Aleem McNeil, Levi Anwuzariki, and Benito Jones all graded as bottom 10 defensive linemen last week versus the Seattle Seahawks as the three of them combined had just two tackles, zero pressures, and of course, zero sacks. So taking a look now, I do think that Benito Jones is going to take a little bit of a backseat. I believe was graded as the second lowest interior defensive lineman in the entire NFL. I think Levi could get a little bit more work in the pass rush as well as Aleem McNeil having to step up but I think it's time to bring in Isaiah Bugs, the starting nose tackle from a year ago, as well as Broderick Martin, your third round pick from Western Kentucky, a six foot six defensive nose tackle, a guy that is going to stop the run early, eat up double teams, have strength and power, and potentially add a little bit of juice to the pass rush as well. At this point, 
The pass rush cannot get any worse. The Lions have one sack on the season, zero sacks from their defensive line. The only player with a sack this season is Alex Sanzaloni, the linebacker, and that was off a really broken play where the pass rush had several opportunities to get to, to get to Geno Smith and failed to do so. So Alex Anzalone stepped up and did so himself. I do think Bugs and Martin could add a little bit of juice to this defensive line, but quite honestly, Julian Okwara, but quite honestly, Romeo Okwara has to step up. Charles Harris has to get better. Aline and Levi have to get better. And Bugs and Martin have to step up when their names are called. That defensive front is really, really poor right now and needs to get better. Linebacker, the linebackers are actually the healthiest unit on the team right now, and they look pretty good. Derek Barnes is coming off arguably his best game as a pro. Malcolm Rodriguez still has some splashy plays. Alex Anzalone, despite missing a few tackles, is a great leader on the defense on the defensive side of the ball. And first round pick Jack Campbell, despite being used sparingly, has been a really good addition to the Detroit Lions defense. When he's in, the defense looks a lot better, especially from the linebacker's perspective. But the problem is Aaron Glenn is using him very sparingly. In the secondary, Cam Sutton has been very good throughout his first two games as a Detroit Lion. Jerry Jacobs had a rough game against Seattle, but I do think we'll bounce back versus a little bit of a smaller wide receiver. But I think we'll bounce back versus the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta, of course, not throwing the ball as much as the Seahawks do. And, of course, the Seahawks do not have DK Metcalf. They do have big receivers. They do have physical receivers. But they do not have anybody that compares to DK Metcalf, nor do they have anybody as quick as Tyler Lockett. I do think Jerry Jacobs could have a bounce back game, especially when he's not being tested quite as much. The slot cornerback slash safety is still Brian Branch, the rookie from Alabama that has had a great start to his NFL season and NFL career. Well, Kirby Joseph takes up the free safety position, assuming he is healthy. If not, it will likely be Ifiatu Malafonwu, while Tracy Walker takes on the starting strong safety role. Now, this defense... I won't say is very good because they aren't very good yet. The defensive scheming for them hasn't been great by Aaron Glenn. And talent-wise, the pass rush isn't super talented. The secondary still has a couple holes in it. And with the injuries arising, the defense has only gotten weaker from a week ago. However, I do think this is a more talented pass rush than it was last year. I do think that Hutch is better than last year. I do think that the addition of Levi and Martin could improve the interior defensive line. I do think Jack Campbell improves the linebacking core while Cam Sutton gives us a real cornerback one with, of course, Brian Branch giving us a playmaker in the secondary alongside him. Losing C.J. Gardner-Johnson is tough, but Tracy Walker was a starter a season ago after playing just three games and was really good and has been really good for the Detroit Lions over his career so far. I think this defense, if put in the right position, can win games for the Detroit Lions, although I, they won't be the primary reason that the Detroit Lions are winning football games. Aaron Glenn has tools to put this defense in positions to succeed. Right, I think he has secondary members that he can trust. I think he has linebackers that he can trust. He's going to have to figure out how to scheme some passers. He's going to have to figure out how to get his players in the backfield, figure out how to contain, figure out how to finish plays because the Detroit Lions are top 10 in the NFL in pressures, but they have zero sacks among their defensive line. I think that partially is a coaching issue. That is partially a scheme issue. I think Aaron Glenn has a little bit of work to do, but I think he has a little bit of talent to do so. Looking at the next month, the Detroit Lions have four very winnable games over the next four weeks. The Atlanta Falcons come to Detroit, and they are 2-0, but those 2-0 are versus the 0-2 Carolina Panthers, as well as the 1-1 Green Bay Packers, both of which games happened in Atlanta. I think the Falcons are still a very talented team. They're a team that run the ball very successfully and work off play action really well, but I think they are a winnable team. I think they are a team that still has some very big weaknesses on the defensive side of the ball, as well as the inner ability to effectively use all the weapons on that offense. I think if you're able to shut down Bijan Robinson and Tyler Algier, I think you're going to have a really good shot at beating the Falcons. However, that is much easier said than done. The Detroit Lions rushing defense has been great over the last 12 games with one exception. So I think the Lions could have an opportunity to stop Bijan, but we will have to wait and see. The Green Bay Packers, I think, are the biggest rival to the Detroit Lions division hopes this year. Packers are also 1-1 one one after a decisive victory in Chicago at Soldier Field over the Bears in Week 1 and a very close loss to the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta a week ago. They are 1-1 one and, one and will meet Detroit at Green Bay on Thursday night football and a prime time situation. Obviously, the last time the Lions went to Green Bay in prime time, they ended up ending the Packers season and shutting them out of the playoffs. The Packers are going to be looking for revenge I think both teams are very, very talented, and it will be a tough game for the Detroit Lions to win on the road. 
the Panthers should be a much better team. Now 0-2, although I did put this together a couple nights ago before Carolina lost on Monday Night Football. Carolina is 0-2. They aren't a very good football team. Bryce Young looks very, very weak. The offensive line doesn't look great. And the Detroit Lions beat Carolina just a month ago in the preseason. The Lions backups pretty much went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Carolina starters, and they still ended up winning and having a very strong game. Bryce Young has a lot to learn. He still seems very green. The wide receiving core isn't great. The offensive line isn't very good. The defense has the ability to make some plays, but the offense is sorely lacking those playmakers in return. And then the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, despite being 0-2, they have beaten the Minnesota Vikings, who are also, who are 0-2, as well as the Chicago Bears, who are 0-2. Neither team, I think, is very good this year, but Tampa Bay's wide receiving core obviously is going to be tough for Detroit's secondary to handle. And of course, Baker Mayfield, when he gets hot, can stay very hot and be incredibly dangerous. I think the Detroit Lions can go 4-0 in these games. I think it's possible the Lions even go 3-1 and in these games with the injuries that they've sustained. But I think at minimum, the Detroit Lions have to go 2-2 two and two in these games. If the Lions can survive the next month, get Josh, pa get Josh Pascal back on the interior for the pass rush, get James Houston back a few weeks later, get Jameson Williams on the offensive side of the ball back, get David Montgomery back, get... Halapaloe Vitae Vitae back, right? Get some of these players back and healthy. I think they can then go into the next stretch of games against guys like the against teams like the Raiders, the Ravens, the Chargers, and then going into Soldier Field much better and much more prepared from a health standpoint. I think these four games are going to be very crucial for the Lions season, but I think that they're all still very winnable games with the roster the Detroit Lions will be trotting out for the next month or so. So with that being said, that is kind of an updated look at the Detroit Lions, a team that is very much ravaged by injuries, a team that is very much weaker right now than they were a week ago at this time, but a team that is still very talented on offense and should be able to put up points, a team with some defensive talent still that should be able to turn teams away, should be able to start getting some takeaways, and should be able to start getting some pass rush, as well as a very favorable schedule going forward against four very winnable football teams and four teams that the Lions honestly probably should go three and one against even with the injuries that they have sustained. If the Lions can walk out be four and two by the bye week, if they can be four and two by the time they get Jamison Williams back on Monday night football, I think that'll be a really good setup for the rest of the season as they get healthy, as they bring guys back. But we will see over the next month exactly what this team is made of and exactly where this team is going to go this year. But with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the content, of course, go down below. Please subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton. And if you subscribe and like the video, that would be very, very helpful to us. But with that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, and as always, go Lions.